Hello, welcome to Movies I Love with yours truly, and I'm Fanel Malloy. So the film that I will be talking about today is The Italian Job. So The Italian Job is a 2003 crime movie, which is directed by F. Gary Gay, F. Gary Gray, who's known for films such as Set It Off and Friday. The film stars Mark Wahlberg, Charlie Theron, and Jason Satham. So the film is a remake of the 1969 film of the same name. So I decided to talk about The Italian Job because this year marks the film's 20th anniversary. And I recently bought uh, the film on 4K Blu-ray when that reissue came out earlier this year. So in terms of quick thoughts, I, I enjoyed this movie. It's a fun heist movie. That, that has comedic and dramatic moments. And while rewatching it recently, it just made me miss the heist genre because um, I feel like these days they don't make too much uh, heist movies, at least on mainstream uh, level. And I just, I don't know, this is something about these types of films that are enjoyable. So let's get into why I love this movie. So we have to talk about the heist, because this is a heist movie. So essentially, um, the plot of this movie is that the, the team at the beginning, they are in Venice. They, uh, they are plotting to steal these tons of gold bricks. And they managed to do that successfully. And then uh, Steve, one of the members of the team played by Edward Norton, uh, double crosses the team. He steals the gold for himself, uh, kills John, played by Donald Sutherland. Uh, the other members, they manage to escape. And then they essentially, one year later, uh, plot to essentially go after Steve and the gold uh, part of the plan is to recruit Stella, who is John's daughter. So is played by Charlize Theron in the movie. And I just like how, even though like it is a heist movie, it, it really is a revenge movie <laughs> because essentially everyone in the team like is emotional because Charlie points out we're all emotional and all that stuff when it comes to doing this job. But yet, they're able to um, get together and not let the emotions like override them as they uh, carry out their plot to go after Steve and all that stuff. And I really enjoyed, yeah, like with the main heist, which happens during the last act of the movie, like, because essentially the team was in control in terms of blurring uh, the, the truck, uh, it, to underground and then transporting those uh the gold bricks um through the mini coopers the mini coopers were so nice uh to see and then essentially everybody wins uh at the end well except for steve because um what happened uh, uh some some point in the movie he kills one he kills the guy i guess that was going to help him to uh, make money off uh, the gold and then the, the guy's brother that he shot essentially wants revenge and then and then turns out the brother work uh, was working with Charlie and then they manage a deal and then essentially the brother takes uh, Steve away and everyone has that happy ending that is great so I want to say with the Mini Coopers, yeah, those are nice to see. They're quite fancy, even though they're small. Because I think at the time the movie came out, I might have seen a few of those out in the street. I don't know like if it's because of the movie itself or if it was popular at the time. Um, but uh, I'll see I'll, I'll see like the Mini Coopers like every now and then out, but, but not so much these days. So also too, yeah, what I like about the movie is the team so i like how everyone here in the team works uh together like uh, there's no like over ranking i guess compared to the original movie so let's get into the members so we have charlie played by mark Wahlberg. so 
essentially of this role is his uh, Danny Ocean from Ocean's Eleven role from Mark Wahlberg. Because in a way here, he's playing against uh, type. Because usually with the movies that I typically see of Mark Wahlberg, he's always playing the tough guy. And here, he's he's not that tough because he has to use his charm, his intellect to essentially get what he wants in this movie. And we have John, uh, Donald Sutherland. So he is the mentor uh, figure, essentially, for Charlie. And I, I loved uh, their relationship that was uh, shown briefly in the movie. And he tells Charlie to essentially yes, uh, settle down with someone and never uh, let go of them, probably because um, he didn't follow his own advice previously, which fractured his relationship with Stella and all that stuff. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, they never got to rebuild that relationship because, you know, of his death and all that stuff. So Stella, John's daughter, played by Charlie Theron, she essentially is not interested in the criminal life because of her father. <laughs> because it was funny that um, during the opening sequence, she asked John like uh, if he has the receipt <laughs> when he told her he bought a fancy necklace for her from Venice. <laughs> that that was quite uh, hilarious. And then we see like uh, she... I'm assuming she's doing freelance work where she opens uh, these different safes for clients, which include the uh, police. So I guess that's in a way that even though she doesn't want to go to the criminal world, I guess she still, you know, owns those skills that her father taught her. But she's doing it, I guess, from a legal standpoint. And it's interesting that, you know, once uh, Charlie tells her about Steve and all and all that stuff, she decides to, you know, resort to the criminal life to get revenge for her father. And then the rest of the team, so we have Handsome Rob, played by Jason Statham. He loves his fast cars uh, and the women. <laughs> And then we have Left Ear, played by Mo Stuff. Uh, he's all about explosives, I guess, which is why like he only has his left ear working, which was shown in a flashback sequence. And Lyle, the tech guy, played by Seth Green, uh, he throughout this movie, he makes a big deal that his roommate stole the idea of Napster from him while he was sleeping. And and then he wants everyone to call him Napster because everyone else has like a, a cool nickname. <laughs> and I guess like, he made a big deal like when when I guess uh, when Charlie refused to call him that initially. And <laughs> uh, I have a bit more on the Napster thing, like uh, part of my critiques for that, but. Um, but yeah, just a note that it seems like everybody uses their first names in this uh, movie, either like their first name or like a, a nickname, I suppose. Interesting note. Um, also, too, what I like about this movie is the wisdom from John and Stella. So John tells uh, Charlie that there are two kinds of thieves. There are those who steal to enrich their lives and those that steal to define their lives and that you should not be the latter because it'll make you miss out on important things in life and all that stuff. So I thought, yeah, that was uh, a nice uh, quote, I guess, advice for Charlie, which he does, um, I guess, take uh, he does um, listen to. And I'll talk about that as a critique later. And another quote from John, and Stella uses this too. Um, in terms of trusting people, they say, it's the devil inside them that I don't trust. So it makes me wonder, like, is it more of their like instinct or intuition that they don't trust? I'm not sure about that. But it's an interesting quote, but not too sure what that means specifically. And Talks the movie talks briefly about technology. So essentially, um Stella, 
she uses um, a machine to open the safes, while John prefers to use uh, his hands or touch. But then when it came to the big heist, Stella, she had to use um, her touch because of the the model of the safe that they had to open and all that stuff. So I thought that was interesting because, because it, because I find with uh, heist movies, um, it's interesting that, especially with the older movies, you could name your pick, um, they rely more on like each other and like their own skills to get the job done. Uh, then like, uh, I'm sure if you see like current day heist movies they'll resort to technology maybe like smartphones computers and all that stuff which is fine but i guess just not as fun compared to going old school and of course heist movie doesn't go without locations and the locations this movie are nice so we have italy at the beginning because of course the italian job and then austria like when the team are are just heading out in the snowy mountains and then Philadelphia when it's one year later briefly and then majority of the film is set in Los Angeles and clearly yeah like with those locations exotic locations and I'm sure some of you will recognize some notable landmarks particularly when the movie is set in Los Angeles and I loved the soundtrack, the score by John Powell is great. I would say my favorite one is the theme song that was used during the opening credits and, and at some portions of the movie. And lastly, I do want to talk about the comedy. So there were two moments. So one involves like when Rob is... Uh, driving in traffic he notices a billboard where he says oh smoking there's a lot of smoking deaths per year or something i can't remember the exact quote but um, <laughs> but that's when he decides to uh, toss away his cigarette because <laughs> i guess in ways he just feels guilty about it and then another moment is with uh the speakers so lyle like you know makes a big deal that he wants to get these big speakers that are so loud that it'll blow like a woman's clothes off and all that stuff and he does get that at the end we see that during the post uh, credits and i just wondered in real life is that possible <laughs> I, I i don't know but if if that is the case let me know in the comment section and lastly another moment is when um Charlie is introducing the team to Stella, telling their uh, backstories on, on their starts uh, in terms of uh, being criminals and all that stuff. I thought that was a, a nice, uh, fun sequence uh, to watch. And let's get into the criticism. So, so after like the betrayal at the beginning, the film cuts to one year later, which I just wondered why. Because I feel like a lot could happen between what happened at the beginning, one year later. Because I feel like as though it should have been set maybe weeks later or days later to be that soon. Yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say with that point. Um, also, too, with Napster. So, so during the big heist, so... After Lyle steals like the communications and all that stuff from the traffic uh, commission, I suppose um, he 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 types message saying, "Oh, you'll um, you'll never shut down the real Napster," <laughs> which is hilarious. But also, to in a ways, doesn't it indirectly reveal yourself? Because let's say, like you know. They get police involved, they decide to investigate that, and then let's say they find the guy that stole Napster, they maybe feel like, no, that's not me, like, it could be Lyle, or whatever, so, yeah. 
and <laughs> that's that, I thought I had another point, but I but that's all. And lastly, um, so John, as I said earlier, tells Charlie to settle down and all that stuff. And then during post credits, is revealed that Stella and Charlie are together, which which for me that just came out of nowhere, <laughs> because if they wanted to establish romance between them. I I feel as though maybe like they could have showed one of them having admiration or both of them without fully admitting it. I suppose, and maybe like towards the end, there could have been like a kiss between them. But again, I had there were no indications of romance between those two throughout this movie. So. I want to talk about the original film. So I saw this movie um, earlier this year for the first time because I got a free rental voucher from Cineplex store. And I thought it was, it was, it was good. I thought Michael Caine did the great job uh, in the movie. Um, I found as though like with, with the original you could say it's a bit more darker compared to the 2003 version. And clearly here, Charlie is the boss <laughs> and he's ordering people to do stuff while with Mark Wahlberg in this movie, you know, is letting people have their say, but at the end he makes the final decision. So he has a more uh, relaxed way of telling people what to do as opposed to Michael Caine, you know, ordering people to do stuff. And let's get into the franchise. So no surprise that this movie did well when it came out at the time. And there were talks of a sequel. And at some point, the sequel is going to be called The Brazilian Job, where it was set in Brazil. And then I guess at some point they just couldn't um, work out the logistics and it ultimately got canceled. And I thought it was uh, disappointing at the time that the sequel got canceled. But at the same time, I feel like as though with this film, it just wraps things up. I feel like it just would not make sense to do a sequel. Because I feel maybe like the scenario for a sequel, I don't know, like if this was a case of Brazilian job, maybe as though like something happens to one of the members of the team in Brazil, and then they decide to go after that person responsible and all that stuff. But if that were the case, probably they felt that um, it was just too similar to the first movie and all that stuff. So yeah, it was just a shame that it never happened, but at the same time, I'm not surprised that it didn't happen. And while doing research, I saw that apparently a TV series is in the works. It's going to be like a reboot uh, of some sort for Paramount Plus, where it's supposed to focus on Charlie's grandkids. I don't know like if uh, how far that is into development. Um, now, in terms of Charlie's grandchildren, that's from the original movie, not from the 2003 movie. So, I mean, if that were to come into fruition, I guess it'll be interesting. It also depends who's going to be involved with this TV series. So, we shall see what happens there. So, that pretty much concludes this video for movies I love. So, let me know what uh what do you guys think about the Italian job? Uh have you guys seen the original film? How about the 2003 film? Just let me know in the comment section and the link to my socials will be in the description and I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will catch you on the next one.